Hi everyone, sharing day two of my time in Korea as part of the Innovate UK Audience of the Future GBIP programme, Global Business Innovation programme, if you want to know the details. Uh, so today we started off by having a look at SK Telecom. SK Telecom is a big uh, telecom provider here in the uh, in, in Korea. We uh, weren't too sure what to expect. We thought maybe they'd show us some of their work on 5G and how they're using data and communication to get in touch with uh, their, their customers better. What they actually showed us was uh, a very strange experience uh, that showed what they think the future is going to look like. It's kind of the uh, the 25 years from now future experience. It would have fit in perfectly well at Disney World as part of the Epcot Center. It was brilliant actually. We uh, were taking a little journey through space uh, using a Hyperloop to start with to go around the Earth up into space. Uh, involved in some medical procedures trying to help somebody save their knee that broken and then back down to earth to go into a uh, uh, an underwater uh, city that they built the whole thing was uh, an immersive experience you had uh, some very exciting technology from today that was being used to describe what might be happening tomorrow i think the whole point of it was to show sk telecom's vision for the future what uh, they imagine the future being like and what their role will be in it and how big telecom providers like them could be instrumental in providing innovations that solve some of the world's biggest challenges today. Uh, there were some odd moments like you know a spaceship dodging space debris and you see an old space shuttle up there in space which is impossible because they're not launching them in the future because they've decontinued them but it was a clever way of just getting us to appreciate that space debris is a problem uh, in the same way that they showed us how they're generating power underwater and mining resources with underwater cities, how we might have a colony on the moon, how we might be using um, a hyperloop for more efficient travel. Uh, the whole thing was, was very cleverly done and as an experience, you know, thought this is this has had a lot of money spent on it and uh, what a good way to try to show, maybe not your customers, I doubt many of them get to see it, but certainly your investors and VIPs to the country to come in and understand what SK Telecom is trying to do. We spent the afternoon at Keti. Uh, Keti is the Korean uh, Electronics and Technology Institute. And we got to meet all of these amazing researchers developing innovative new technologies in XR, digital humans, content, uh, holographics. Uh, the XR stuff was pretty cool. We were seeing them developing hardware solutions that uh, were sort of the things you'd expect to be going on deep in the heart of Apple Magically, Microsoft HoloLens division. Um, they were developing their own AR glasses. They're developing their own lenses for them, uh, making them commercially available to anybody who wants to use them. So that's exciting. That means we can make our own AR headsets if we knew how. Um, we were seeing how they were developing holographic technology. So they're, they've got 3D printing for holograms. So you can uh, use lasers and sound waves to create a, uh, a, a 3D image that's baked into a, a piece of uh, plastic. And when you look at it, you get a, a detailed 3D you know, RGB coloured hologram inside this disc. It's not powered, it's not an LED display, it's just a picture that's 3D, just like Harry Potter is the analogy we kept coming up with. Uh, they had all sorts of cool technology that was you know, looking at how they could bend light to make uh, HUDs for cars and, and airplanes and jet fighters. Uh, we saw some really cool motion capture equipment, which got me very excited. Uh, because we've got our exciting motion capture streaming technology that allows people to, to stream low latency data from a motion capture studio to anywhere in the world. Um, and we see this sort of motion capture technology, which is an IMU based system, so inertial motion unit, uh, lots of little magnets based around the body, it uses only six magnets to do an entire body capture, which is less than I've seen on anything else. Uh, we thought that's quite a cool technology that might work. Uh, in the applications that we might use at Copper Candle, such as stitching into costumes for a piece of live theatre, or maybe integrating it into a, uh, a very simple motion capture suit that people could have at home. So we, we saw some cool stuff there, and it was interesting talking to them about potential futures as well, uh, with collaborations and R&D opportunities coming up. Uh, what was very interesting was how much um, government-level R&D and opportunities that have been created between Korea and the UK and there's loads of funding and everyone wants to find partnerships to develop you know, UK career uh, R&D opportunities. So that's something that uh, I think Copper Candle will be taking up and uh, it's quite exciting some of the people we've been speaking to here that could be involved in that. 
Um, once again, it's time for me to go out for dinner. So uh, last night we had a nice, a nice dinner out with everyone. Um, tonight I think we're having a Korean barbecue, which I don't want to miss. So I'm going to tune out now.